relationship issues, sex. Did you me kiss? Mm. Nice. A proper kiss. No, Tom, come on. Mm. God, can you move up your squash to me? Take these off. No, don't. Take these off. Oh, stop it, please. Oh, God, does it always have to be about sex? No, it doesn't always have to be about sex, but it'd be nice. Like many couples, Tom and Rosie have different ideas about sex. Come on, let's just have a cuddle. Well, you always want a cuddle, you know, or you're tired, or you've got to get up early, or you've got a headache. So boring. God, why are you being so nasty? I'm not being nasty. I'm just... if I ever want to have sex with you now, though? I just want to be able to have sex with my girlfriend. Sometimes, these differences can cause some tension. Get off my hair. The question is, though, what are they really fighting about? We spoke to Paula Hall, an accredited relationship psychotherapist who's helped hundreds of people develop healthy ways of dealing with disagreement. Oh dear, it's such a common one, arguing about sex. Um, and I think it's one that most couples think will never happen to them in the, the first throes of a new relationship, the first six months, 12 months, when uh, you can't keep your hands off each other. You're, you're convinced that this is how it's going to be forever. But uh, inevitably, for most couples, there reaches a point where female sex drive in particular goes down. And that, that is a biological fact that female sex drive drops after about 18 months to two years within a relationship. That can leave a lot of men feeling rejected, unloved, unwanted, unfancied. Uh, a lot of women feeling guilty, um, thinking there may be something wrong with them, feeling as though they're being rejecting and withholding and it results in, in this uh, yeah, back-to-back -back silence, standoff position with, with both people feeling hurt. It's another area where they really need to begin to kind of communicate and, and talk about some of their differences, but particularly they need to address what's going on, on underneath, his feelings of rejection and her feelings of um, perhaps low self-worth and a feeling pressurised by him. First of all, they need to recognise that their differences are biological. There's, there's nothing wrong with either of them. Men have up to 40 times more testosterone than women, so this discrepancy is a very common one. They need to, to realise that it's, it's not anything personal. Tom particularly needs to recognise that it's not him that's being rejected, it's, it's sex that's being rejected. They certainly also need to make sure that they have other ways that they're showing their intimacy and affection for each other, so they're still being physically close. The most important thing is they don't let sex become battleground. If they begin to argue about the frequency, then actually they're less likely to have sex. The closer they are as a couple, the, the more you know, intimate their feelings are, the more likely he is to actually get sex. I think talking about the problem much more openly and recognising that this is a difference and sort of discussing strategies, what they might do if, if Tom wants sex and, and Rosie doesn't, and really kind of trying to think of some practical solutions if, if there are any. Otherwise it's just kind of part of growing up as a couple and recognising that this is one of those things you have to manage. What time are you in the morning? Nine. Are you tired? Ready? Do you get an early night? <laughs> Done.